Tao, you have a question? No, no questions. I, no I, think, I think your briefing is uh, very clear and uh, simple to follow. Uh, the only issue though is uh, the practice and to practice again and again. Uh, so I, I think your, your little message today is good. Okay, okay. Don't don't get too um, worried about practicing again and again. When you if you go to the um, if you go to the internet and you look up how do I change a habit if I'm over twenty five, they're going to talk a little bit to you about neural plasticity, the flexibility of your brain to change, and. It turns out that they proved the way that you retrain a brain to let go of an old habit and start a new habit is you have to stop feeding the old habit, and that's your personal attention. So you take your attention off. That's how we practice twim. Relax, smile, and come back. And you set up a new habit when you go in another direction and you smiled. You see that? So every time, every time that you practice your six R's, you're fulfilling the whole Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path is getting completed and you are actually letting go of that old habit and bringing up a new habit. As you do that, this old habit that was this wide, it gets thinner and thinner and thinner until it just dies, falls away. And the new habit comes of smiling and forgiving and compassion and loving kindness. That's what happens, you see? And the more you do that, the stronger it gets. I had somebody come once and they said, you know, this smile thing, I can't smile. I never have. I've always not been smiling. So I told him, he says, how am I supposed to change? I said, start smiling. <laughs> and Bhante said, just start smiling. If you keep smiling, you're giving a message to the brain. Smile, 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 smile. And if you're the Russian, shmeel, shmeel, shmeel. <laughs> he was the one that said shmeel. And I said, no, smile. And he said, shmeel. <laughs> ah, it's shmeel. I shmeel, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Da, da. So you just can you have that power and you've been told all your life and people think he's that way he's never going to change he's just stuck see nobody is stuck anymore because why because of the flag anicha <laughs> Everything is changing. The flag, Anicca, and nobody is just going to teach you about suffering here. We're going to teach you about cessation of suffering every time we talk. See, that's what we got to learn. There's suffering, there's cause, there's cessation, and there's path. Once we learn that path, we're working on cessation of suffering. We're not concentrating on just suffering. We, we know if there's suffering. We've got enough information about suffering. Probably most of us have enough for life. <laughs> okay. So you embrace cessation. And how, how do you feel when the cessation is there? You got to smile. <laughs> okay. Okay. The uh, session you've just done, really, really helpful. Very good. Very, very simple. Very clear. Um, and one thing that I was reminded of is uh, uh, someone I worked with a little while ago. And uh, they were very attached to their uh, PTSD because it was the feeling that they associated with at the time of their child's death. And wow. it felt like it was the only real connection they had left. 
uh -huh. uh, because it occurred at the time uh, that their child died. And it took them uh, some time really to see that they had other options around that, uh, that they could remember and recollect and honor uh, that, that memory a different way. Absolutely, absolutely. And Bada Rakata, the Sutta, the past and the future and the present, is a gentle way of explaining that you don't lose those memories. You put them in a shoebox and like postcards you're collecting and you pull them out anytime you want to, but now you understand what grief is, what feeling, what emotion. You don't let grief consume you, but you can go back and look at what you learned and what you remember is not a bad thing. It's not. If you understand and you are grounded in how, where all these pieces actually belong, I think, is it? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. And, and also that grief uh, can be like, um, like a vibration that passes through you. You don't have to hold on to it. That's right. That's what Bonte always says about this. And I feel very much that this is true and have taught this to people who have lost their children, okay, is that when grief comes, once you understand that grief is just like any other feeling, it's not there, and then it comes up, and then it is there, and then it goes down. And it's the same as a piece of pain. The grief is a form of pain. It's mental pain, and it can affect your body if you start holding on to it. But if you understand that a pain in a bone works the same way with sar sarcomic cancer or terminal illness, it's not there, then it arises, then it is there, and it might be doing that, for instance, with a throbbing thing, and then it passes away. If you watch it, that's what it does every time. Now, once you know that's what it does every time, then you can allow it to do that underneath where you are and smile and say, I I know you're still there, but I respect you, grief. Yeah. I understand what you are, and you may come through, and you may pass through me. And that's explaining sort of the simile of passing through a person, what you just said. To say, just let it pass through with, without, remember, you know, you need to look at some of the uh, research at the Mayo Clinic, the, where they, the pain clinic really goes into this about how the pain works and how it is described as a pattern thing and stuff. And um, the naturopathic doctor, his father, um, I forget uh, his name, but the, uh, his father works at the Mayo Clinic. And you know, when he started to study with Bonte, the stu his son started studying with Bonte, they're talking about the patterns of pain that's exactly what they're discovering with the pain, how it works if you wire a person up and it's happening. Exactly the pattern is the same every time it's happening if that's what's going on, you see? So, so knowing that it has its own lifespan, that it is touched by a Nietzsche, that it arises and passes away, and that's going to be how life is right now. When we have somebody like with our... our uh, what is it called, rheumatoid arthritis, and they can't use their hands anymore and they're so knotted up and it's so painful, then when we explain this to them, they learn to relax more, they got more motion from their hands because, they, because when they were stressing over that pain in the knuckles and around the hand too much, uh, then they couldn't even pick up a magazine or hold a phone or anything, see? But soon as we explain, this is actually part of this whole process of dependent origination includes the mental pain and physical pain. Then they were finding relief. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.